Believe it or not, but this huge enclosure will be for roaches. And not just any type of roaches. This species is arguably one of the prettiest type of roaches. I mean, prettiest species of roaches, if you ask me at least. And not only they, that they look pretty, but also their size is, you see, pretty huge. Keep in mind that my hands are kind of big, so yeah, you get the picture. And not only that they are big and pretty, but they're also pretty skittish. They run super fast, you see, and it is kind of hard to manage them, you see. They just jump around and try to dig and hide away. <laughs> they have quite the character, just check them out inside of the tube. You see this one, this is a nymph, and also the best thing is I have a ton of babies inside. I will try to show you. You see, here is one baby. I know that it looks kind of like a dubia roach, but this is the baby of this species. And the species name is... Let me just check first. Blaberus fusca, or common name is giant cave roach. And the adults are generally outside, crawling across the cork barks, but now they are disturbed, so that's why they are trying to hide. While nymphs are usually digging in the substrate. Let me see if I can... Yeah, you see? Here is one, also here and here. Yeah, there is a lot of them, which is a great thing. It is always a joy to see animals reproducing when you keep them. It means that they like the environment. So you would agree that keeping them inside of this small tub definitely wouldn't do. So therefore, we will make this an awesome roach house. And not only for roaches, but I will also inside put a couple of a giant African land snails and some of the isopods that I have tons of in orb weavers enclosure. Yeah. The background is already installed as you can see. That is one less job for us to do now. So all that we need to add to the enclosure is some substrate, cork bark tubes, some rocks, some leaves, some branches, you know, to make it super nice and full of climbing stuff for the roaches. All of that stuff I have here eagerly waiting to be used. So, as always, let's start with the substrate. I will need a ton, so I'm just gonna start dumping it in. Thankfully, recently I mixed a fresh batch of substrate, so I have more than enough ready on hand. Let's see if that is enough. Yeah, it should be good. This will give us a lot of scaping options, while at the same time it will provide a lot of places for nymphs to dig and bury and do whatever. Also, I will squeeze some of that substrate inside of the background cracks, you see? This way I'm getting more interested texture on the background. It is not just plain and simple and monotone as it was at start. Now to add the fun part. I will start with this super interesting looking wood, you see? It's so cool. I'm just gonna squeeze it somewhere in the corner like this. It is such a dramatic piece and look! looks so good already. Just wait until we add all of this stuff. Um, now this. I'm gonna try to incorporate it as part of the background, like this. Hmm. Yeah, that looks pretty good. Now for this side I want to make an actual cave or something that looks like an actual cave because they are called a cave roach, so it will be fitting. I will start it with a piece of cork bark like this. Then I will fill the rest of it with substrate and cover it with rocks. Just like I did for my Harry Potter enclosure. Because I was really happy and surprised how well it looked in the end. These flat rocks are the key of that build. Without them it wouldn't be possible. I just stack them around and slowly but surely it will start to look like a proper cave. Voila! Here is the cave. The entrance is not as big as I wanted it to be big, but it will surely do. It looks pretty sweet. Now to add the rest of the stuff. Mainly the cork bark tubes, but now this cork bark tube is kind of too big for the enclosure. If I put it inside, it will kind of hide all the details that I... Um, I will actually remove this from the corner and we will add it here on front, but 
first I will squeeze this cork bark tube like that yeah now roaches have a large hiding area inside of that cork bark tube so this this will go here because it needs to be visible and exposed yeah much better this other cork bark tube will also go in the back here and I will just partially dig this one so roaches can go under it especially nymphs you know this small one will also go in the back over there this one here also half buried and since this one looks like a tiny tree I will put it over there <laughs> just gonna stick in this branch yeah so it covers the background a bit and where could I put this thing <laughs> it looks sweet right I'll just squeeze it in here yeah so it is exposed like that now a bit of sand for the texture bed Yeah, sand for the texture magic. Also on the background a bit. I am loving this, but we need one more thing and that is leaf litter. Just a little bit of leaf litter. A little bit of leaves. Too bad that they aren't a bit smaller, but whatever. It looks great. If roaches won't enjoy this, I don't know what they will enjoy. The enclosure will basically be a heaven for them. This nymph will be the first one to enter if I manage to get it. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> oh, it is crazy. Oh, there we go. This is already gone in the lush forest of cork bark and wood. Great. Next one. <laughs> you see how fast they are. He's also running for the forest, but he stopped actually. Now it's your turn. They are so crazy fast. I can actually just add them all with this tunnel because they are all inside of this one tunnel. There's one. Also another nymph. Oh, I thought that I only have one big nymph. Where is the rest? One, two, three, <laughs> four, five, six. Oh, also another nymph, whoa! So that means three big nymphs and where are you going? I made a nice enclosure for you and you are already trying to escape. You can actually go in the cave. Can I get... Oh, I want one to go inside of the cave. Can I get you to go... Please, I need one to go inside of the cave. <laughs> there we go, giant cave roach. And it is actually giant, you see, because the cave is actually tiny, so he looks like a giant for sure. So guys, are you enjoying it? There is so much room to move around and explore and do roach things, right? You can claim your own land, you can build a house on it or whatever. But since there is a lot of nymphs inside of... Oh, there is also one, one more adult in the substrate. No, please. <laughs> Go in! And also you, can I get you to climb the cork bark maybe? Yeah, tough luck, but it will be fun to observe them during the night because they will probably walk around the enclosure and it should be an interesting thing to observe. But what I wanted to do, since there is a lot of nymphs inside of this substrate, I am just going to dump all of this substrate inside of the enclosure, probably somewhere in the back. Yeah, I will definitely do that in the back. Because I don't want to miss some nymph inside of the substrate and throw it away accidentally. That wouldn't be really cool. <laughs> I was checking if there are any uh, tiny nymphs inside, but there was actually a full-grown adult. I don't know how I missed him. Now let me grab a couple of snails for the enclosure. It will be fun to see them live together with roaches. Here are the snail guys. Currently they are tiny, but as time goes on they will grow. As you know I have a ton of them in the original enclosure. You go here, you go here on top. Come on, why are you always trying to escape out of the enclosure? There is so many places to hide, but you choose to just run out. Stop with that, please. I have three more snails to go, so just bloop, bloop, and bloop. There we go. Oh yeah, also, as I said, I will add isopods, but I will close the enclosure just in case. And springtails, we need springtails for the enclosure. You see these isopods? I just grabbed a bunch of soil from the enclosure and they can be found within, you see? These are pretty cool little buggers. <laughs> so I'll just dump them inside and mix with the current. 
current substrates. And finally, these little buggers, the springtails to help clean the enclosure, even though I think that this enclosure will be pretty clean with all the roaches and isopods, but it is good to have them. Okay, that is it. Now, what I want to do, I will set the enclosure on its spot, or actually I will leave it here and I will let camera record a time lapse during the night. That way we will see how they will explore the enclosure and do roach stuff and snail stuff and isopod stuff. Yeah, it should be cool. So let's go, time lapse. <laughs> There was some action, but honestly, I was expecting a bit more from them. So what we are going to do now, I will take some food and put it in the middle of the enclosure. And then I will record another time lapse to see if that can be more interesting. What can I say? My time lapses are always so disappointing. Uh, that is everything for this video, unfortunately. I hope you still enjoyed it. I mean, it's pretty enclosure. So if you did, thumbs it up and comment something. If you want to support this channel even more, there's a Patreon page. If you're new to this channel, make sure to subscribe. I upload every Monday. So see you again in a week. Bye.